The government is to spend another £46 million to try to deal with the virus, including more money to find a vaccine and to develop a rapid test for the disease. Around the world, there are now more than 100,000 cases. Of those, more than half, almost 56,000 people, have recovered. But more than 3,400 have died. Our medical correspondent, Fergus Walsh, has the latest. Science is fighting back against the new coronavirus. This lab at Imperial College London is developing a vaccine. The aim? To protect people from getting infected. They know the world is waiting absolute sense of, of urgency and wanting to deliver um, and stepping up to this challenge um, and so everybody is working as fast as they can um, there's also a degree of kind of just innovation to make things happen really really much quicker than they've done before the first doses several hundred of them are kept in this freezer but it's far from ready yet this is one of several prototype vaccines against coronavirus which are being developed by teams across the world. All must go through animal and human trials before they can be declared safe and effective. And all that takes time. Things have progressed much more quickly than they would have done in the past and it's not unreasonable to assume that we will end up with a vaccine and we may do, do so in a year, 18 months, which is remarkable when you consider just a few years ago it would have taken 20 years to do that. You need to be quite forceful. Quite forceful, yeah. yep. The Prime Minister, visiting a lab in Bedfordshire, announced £46 million of government funding to help find a vaccine and develop a rapid test for the disease as cases in the UK saw their biggest daily increase. It will certainly be a, a substantial period of uh, disruption when we have to deal with this, uh, with this outbreak. How big that will be, how long uh, that will be, I think is still uh, an open question. At Milton Keynes Hospital, a second death in the UK from coronavirus has just been confirmed. The patient was a man in his early 80s who had underlying health conditions. The number of confirmed cases in the UK is now 164, but that's still way behind Italy, by far the worst outbreak in Europe. The Vatican, the tiny city-state in Rome, has announced its first case of coronavirus. The Pope, who's had a bad cold, has already reportedly tested negative. Across Italy, mostly in the north, there were nearly 800 new cases today, bringing the total to more than 4,500 with 197 deaths. But for most, it's proving a mild illness, and more than 500 of those infected have already fully recovered. Fergus Walsh, BBC News. Well, the Health Secretary, Matt Hancock, today tried to reassure people about food supplies in the coming months, saying the government is working with supermarkets to make sure that people who have to self-isolate will get the food that they need. But leading supermarkets have contradicted him. Our business editor, Simon Jack, is here. So what have they said, Simon? Well, the very latest, Ruta, is that this afternoon there was a conference call between the Food and Environment Secretary, George Eustace, with major supermarkets where they would discuss food security. And that was described by to me as hastily arranged by supermarkets who are so baffled by Matt Hancock's comments last night. They said not only has he talked, not talked to us about getting food to people who self-isolate, but he hasn't really talked to us about food security at all. Um, and they also in the call today, they said, you know, is there a way that supermarkets could get food delivery services, online groceries to people who self-isolate? They said, listen, it's only 7% of the market. We can do a bit more like Christmas levels, but we certainly can't do the other 93%. It's important to say that there is no shortage of food, but getting stuff onto the shelves in time is proving a logistical challenge for some, some more than others. They say they're meeting demand, but working around the clock. Others said the spike in demand was noticeable. Things like pasta, tomatoes, oh, sorry, tin tomatoes, tin goods, but they are working within tolerable limits. And they said also that uh, people should continue to shop as normal, but at least one of them said, not everyone is doing that. So there is some confusion, some discrepancy about what the government is saying is happening and what the government is saying to the industry. OK. Simon, many thanks. Simon Jack there. 
Off the coast of San Francisco, there are thousands of people being held in quarantine on a cruise ship, the Grand Princess, after a 71-year-old passenger died of coronavirus. Among the passengers are 140 Britons, with all on board told to stay in their cabins. There have so far been 260 confirmed cases in the US, with 14 deaths. Most of the cases are in Washington state and in California. This report from Sophie Long in California contains some flashing images. Coronavirus testing kits being lowered onto the cruise liner that is now stranded off the northern Californian coast. The thousands of passengers on board are confined to their rooms. 142 are British. It would be nice to know where we are going. It's a 50th birthday that Victoria Hanlon and her husband Neil from Somerset will not forget. They told me they are getting room service and some information. How do you feel about the information flow you've been receiving, how you've been treated? So far it's very good, but as long as it's the truth. So all, you want to, all you want to hear is the truth, you know, there's no point in up and cracks that. So as long as it's the truth, then yeah, so far so good. You would like to, like to know where we are. Yeah, it, as in the ocean, we have got a clue where we are. We, we haven't got a clue where we're going. The Grand Princess won't be able to sail into San Francisco until health authorities are satisfied with the results of testing carried out on board. They want to prevent further cases of the coronavirus being brought ashore into California. But the reality is it's already here and it's spreading. Keep up the great work and God bless you all. As it does, there is growing concern that the response has been insufficient and people are having to pay thousands of dollars for tests. On a visit to the worst affected area near Seattle, the man in charge, Vice President Mike Pence, wasn't risking handshakes. He admitted there weren't enough testing kits available for those that want them. We don't have enough tests today uh, to meet uh, what we anticipate will be the demand going forward. But at this care home in Kirkland near Seattle, which has been linked to at least six deaths, there is anger from relatives of those still awaiting diagnosis. We want to know when our loved ones will be tested. We don't want general information about how and when the group as a whole will be tested. We want specific information as it pertains to our loved one. Going to Tennessee. As the number of infections swells to more than 200 scattered across 18 states, President Trump signed an $8.3 billion bill to tackle the outbreak. Came out of nowhere. The money will be used for testing, potential vaccines and treatment for those affected. Well, we've been communicating with some more of the passengers on board and most of them are trying to stay positive and keep their chins up, but they've been in limbo and confined to their cabins for more than 24 hours now and a few are becoming increasingly concerned, not just about contracting coronavirus, but about their health in general. Many on board are elderly and reliant on medication that could run out if they're not able to dock soon. The cruise companies say they're working with passengers to make sure that doesn't happen. Sophie, many thanks. Sophie Long there. Well, while the majority of those who've contracted coronavirus have already recovered, some people are far more at risk than others. A recent study from the Centre for Disease Control in China found that older people, especially those above 80, are more vulnerable because of weaker immune systems. Those with pre-existing medical conditions such as cancer, diabetes and asthma are more likely to become severely ill. Researchers also found that being male could mean you're at an increased risk. The higher death rate could be because men are more likely to smoke. Our health correspondent Dominic Hughes has been speaking to some people with underlying health conditions. Tony Collier lives with advanced prostate cancer. He still runs three times a week despite his diagnosis. But the illness has left him especially vulnerable to infections like coughs and colds, and now coronavirus. Because I've got no male hormone, I seem to have great difficulty fighting off infections. And I got the flu and it really knocked me for six for about three months. And I'd normally recover much more quickly than that. Where would you pitch your own level of concern over coronavirus? What I'm trying to do is continue to live life as normally as possible. I'm not avoiding crowds, um, but I'm just taking the usual sensible precautions, such as hand washing, which is what we've been told to do. So I think it's important to try to live normally, not to over panic, not to overreact, but actually be aware that there is a risk. The government is promoting good hygiene, hand washing alongside using and disposing of paper tissues as an important way to minimise the risk of passing on the infection. As this virus starts to spread throughout communities, we will all need to think not just how we protect our own health, but the health of everyone around us, particularly those who might be more vulnerable. 
So Linda is thinking of her mother-in-law, who's in her 90s. Because if we get something, we won't be able to help her, because we'll have to isolate, won't we? Linda and Sandra have been friends for five decades. But in recent years, both have experienced health issues, a mini stroke, lung disease, a cancer scare, high blood pressure, that could leave them at heightened risk. So, are they alarmed? I think I've got to keep a sensible head on it um, and just hope that what you've been told to do will work for you. Until we're actually told, no, don't go out or anything like that, which I don't, I don't think, hopefully it'll get to that. But. I'm still going out and I'm going to the theatre and I'm doing the classes and things like that. People will panic and oh, they yeah. are panicking. Yeah. But, but at the moment we aren't. <laughs> no, we're just carrying on. Those who live with an underlying health condition are already well aware of the dangers posed every year by winter flu. So far, at least, people seem determined not to let coronavirus radically change their lives. Dominic Hughes, BBC News, Huddersfield. Scotland women's Six Nations match with France in Glasgow tomorrow has been postponed after a home player tested positive for coronavirus. Scottish rugby say the player is being treated in a healthcare facility but is otherwise well and that seven members of the Scotland playing and management staff are in self-isolation. The men's match on Sunday is set to go ahead as planned. Iran has reported its biggest daily increase in coronavirus infections with around 1,200 new cases confirmed. Almost 5,000 people have now been infected and 124 have died. The authorities cancelled Friday prayers and are trying to prevent travel between cities. There are now signs that coronavirus in China is being controlled, with new infection figures and the number of deaths beginning to stabilise. But after more than six weeks of quarantine and shutdown, the pressure on Chinese society and its economy is telling. As other countries consider how best to handle a major outbreak, John Sudworth looks now at the impact on China's economy, its health system and on education. It's a karate class with something missing. Look. Students. Go. They are all online instead. In the fight against the virus, every school and college in China has now been shut for more than two weeks. I think most of us have confidence for our country to get through all this because uh, I think in this very time we found out we are very united because we just do whatever we can to help the country. We, buy, uh, we do this by staying at home, which is quite important. <laughs> the university's Internet Control Centre handles almost 4,000 virtual courses a week. It's a sign of China's strengths. Discipline, mass mobilisation, high tech. But the virus has exposed China's weaknesses too, with cover-up and delay helping it to spiral out of control. Everyone's felt the effects. Here, a woman needing urgent chemotherapy for her cancer waits at a checkpoint while her mother pleads to be allowed through. Hu Ping was eventually taken to a hospital less inundated with the virus, to the relief of her fiancé. Some patients in this situation cannot get treated. She was the lucky, lucky one who find a hospital to get treated. The wider impact on China's economy offers a warning to other countries. China now faces two huge, conflicting challenges. On the one hand, the control measures are necessary to contain the virus, but on the other, by blockading villages, closing down transport networks and keeping tens of millions of workers in quarantine, it risks choking off its economy. Look what's happened to car sales, for example, falling by 20% in January and more than 80% in February. Air travel statistics are just as stark, with the number of departures from China's busiest airports massively reduced. With the infection rate falling, business and transport links are being eased back into life. But this giant economy is still a long way from normality. John Sudworth, BBC News, Beijing.
Well, I'm joined by our medical correspondent, Fergus Walsh. Um, Fergus, China has been living with this virus for weeks. How serious could this be for us in the UK? It's really hard to know just how bad the outbreak could be here compared to, say, China or Italy. But expect further surges in cases in the coming days and weeks, and sadly, more deaths. But some people will be questioning why this issue is getting so much attention when seasonal flu claims thousands of lives here every year. And we've had two deaths from coronavirus. And the reason is this is a nastier, this is a more virulent virus than flu. And it has the potential to have a far greater impact. And we have no vaccine yet, as we do with flu. But it's worth stressing that four out of five people who get infected will have a mild illness. And even those who are at greater risk, the elderly and those with underlying health conditions, the vast majority of them will recover as well. Now, we've had 164 people confirmed as, an, as infected in the UK out of a population of 66 million. So a sense of perspective is crucial. OK. Fergus, many thanks. Fergus Walsh there. And you can keep up to date with all the developments concerning the coronavirus outbreak, including the symptoms to watch out for, and that's on the BBC News app and also on our website.